All right, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to walk through in detail every feature and function of the multi-staff scheduler. So this is going to be a multi-part video series, so I appreciate you joining me here and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, the first sheet is the setup screen where we are now and this is where we're going to set up the company information and you won't have to visit this too often once you get it set up, so we'll go ahead and uh, go through it. The first is the schedule start time and that uh, here we can select any time uh, from that we want. And we'll go ahead and set 8 o'clock. Make sure that <clears throat> when you do set up the start time that you don't change it since changing this will actually affect the scheduled appointments once you start scheduling. So we don't want to change that. You want to make sure this is set to the earliest uh, possible appointment time and not necessarily a individual staff starting time that we can set up elsewhere and I'll walk you through that a little bit later on. So you want to make sure to set it and not change this. The last appointment time uh, we can set that up as well here and we'll go ahead and put that up to let's say uh, 5 o'clock and uh, once we have this set up the the last appointment time you can change after scheduled appointments uh, this won't affect the scheduled appointments next we have the row interval set to these are the duration uh, we have anywhere from 5 10 15 30 and one hour options so you get to be able to choose that and this as well you won't want to change after you start scheduling appointments because it will affect those scheduled appointments so we want to set this and forget it next we have the waiting list rows and waiting list rows is just a different color of rows at the bottom of the schedule so if we have this set to three and we go to our main schedule and we scroll down we'll see we have three rows of scheduled appointments uh, as same as well as on the week view we have three rows in yellow for our waiting list and if we were to go ahead and set uh, that to zero uh, you'll see they would be disappear from both the main scheduling which is the day view and the week view so changing it there will affect it so if you don't want any waiting list rows just set that to zero Okay, next we have first uh, and last and last and first. This is basically how your contacts will be displayed. Uh, so uh, if we have it set to first, last on the, on the contact sheet, you'll see we have, uh, let's go ahead and put in a name here. And so they're going to be displayed as Randy Austin. However, if we go to the setup screen and we change that to last first, back to the contacts and you'll see that the names have been switched and it is this format that we'll be using throughout the scheduling uh, it is this format so you'll want to stick to that uh, because that is the way that they're going to be displayed so you want to set that up just once as well and try not to make that changes as well next we have the scheduled days to display uh, these are the work days. These are the main work days. If you're not going to work on those days, then you'll go ahead and uh, unselect them. If you're going to work, uh, select them just like that. Once you do, so, once you do mark them as non-work days, when you go to the main, you will see in the mini calendar here that they are marked off. So let's say we're not going to work Wednesdays and then uh, you'll go ahead and uh, mark that off and then we go back to the main schedule and you'll see on that mini calendar here, Wednesdays have been marked off as well and so when you go to previous day it's just gonna skip you'll see it'll skip that day so that way it's much easier to go previous to next and only focus on those scheduled work days so you'll see it'll skip right from Tuesday uh, right to Thursday however when we go back and we mark Wednesdays as a work day and back to the main and then you'll go ahead and see now now Wednesdays will show up okay so that's really handy for uh, scheduling uh, next we have the referral types and you can put anything up in here that you want and these are the types of referrals uh, that uh, would how your contact heard about you whether it's uh, through some type of advertisement or through some type of um, uh, internet or, or however uh, they've been referred by it's a good way this way we can track in the report section how many contacts are are being referred by by who and what we can also put in the cost here uh, this is going to help us uh, get a cost per acquisition or a cost per new client if uh, we've spent two hundred dollars on advertising through Google search and we've gotten ten new uh, contacts we can run a report and know that uh, each one cost us uh, twenty dollars so that's going to be really helpful uh, when you want to know actually how much it's costing to get those new contacts or new patients or new customers. Okay, and uh, next we have the uh, select contact info to appear in a pop-up on the schedule. Now what a pop-up is, is it'll display specific information. 
Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, put in a, a contact here. We only have one so far. So we just start typing. And what that is is uh, is that that pop-up is here. So here, just on hover over the contact, it shows lots of different information, whether it's uh, mobile phone numbers, last appointment date, uh, package information, email. And so we can we can choose what we display by by checking or unchecking these. So if we were to uh, uncheck certain fields, and then we went and we refreshed that, and then we go ahead and refresh that, you'll see that uh, we uh, now only show a limited amount of uh, information in the pop-up. So that's really helpful when uh, we're going through that. You want to see uh, information uh, just on hover over each contact. So that's really helpful as well. All right, next up we have the scheduled holidays. And this is handy whether they're uh, public holidays or just company holidays. You can put them in here and they'll be displayed throughout the scheduling screens. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and take a look, New Year's. and. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, put that date in, and then um, we'll see how that's displayed uh, on the scheduling screen. So we've put in January 1st, and now back to the main screen. When we do go to January, and we can quickly go there just by selecting the month here and uh, going to the first, we can see that it's in purple, uh, and as well as on the week view uh, as well, it will show up as in purple as well, so that it's uh, very clear to the people using the application that uh, it is a holiday, so we've uh, made that very clear. And uh, okay, so we see here, in, it's in purple here on the right side. Okay, and back to the setup screen. So that's holidays, and you can enter up to, uh, I think, uh, 15 holidays there. And next we have the payment terms, and this is going to be handy when we're uh, creating invoices. Uh, we can set our own payment terms, so we can set the number of days, and whether it's going to be the default term on payment. So that means if it's the default term and we create a new invoice, it is going to be that term, and the due date will be set based on 15 days after the due date so uh, let's go ahead and uh, create an invoice so I can show you how that works and uh, we'll go ahead and go to back to today's date we'll just create a uh, schedule uh, scheduled appointment and then we'll go ahead and create an invoice based on that scheduled appointment okay so all we'd have to do is uh, select on that scheduled appointment and then click invoice selected appointment and then uh, you will see that uh, the uh, terms are to net 15 and the due date is automated so that is what we use the default payment term and the payment terms for uh, next up we have the customer referral rebates and this is handy when you want to reward those customers contacts or patients for referring others and what we can do is we can see we can turn this off or on and uh, we can set a rebate amount and then we can set a rebate threshold the rebate amount is the rebate that we're going to be rewarding those contacts who referred your new contacts and the rebate threshold this is the amount uh, that you must invoice uh, on that new contact in order for uh, the referring contact to receive that rebate amount. And this is the invoice description uh, once uh, the rebate has been uh, earned and once the rebate is applied there's a description on the invoice that will be displayed and we'll walk through that on the main thing but uh, the information will appear here in the main section once a contact has uh, earned a rebate. So that's really helpful in automatically rewarding those contacts who have referred others. Uh, next up we have the set initial invoice. If you're uh, on a specific invoice number and you want to keep uh, those invoices and maintain that consistency, you can go ahead and set that up here. Just simply uh, enter a number here and then set the invoice now and then that'll set the invoice. So that means any new invoice will automatically have uh, incremented one starting at that number. Next, we have the automatically set contact status as inactive if no appointments were scheduled in the last 60 days. This is really helpful when we differentiate our contacts so that we know who is uh, active and who is inactive. Uh, this is really handy when it comes when we're running uh, specific reports based on those active contacts. And we can also send automated emails based on the contact uh, activity uh, or how long they have been uh, active or inactive 
inactive. So we can go ahead and set this number to any number of days, and basically this is the number of days uh, since their last scheduled appointment. If uh, it's been 60 days, they will automatically be set to inactive. However, if they schedule a new point, a new scheduled appointment, uh, their status will go back to active. So this is really handy when uh, we're running uh, the active, and the active status will uh, be displayed uh, on the information uh, right under here, under active. So then the client information will be displayed there. So that's quite helpful. Next, we have the custom drop-down list, and this is basically this gives you the ability to sign assign any type of field to a contact. Let's say we call it health insurance, and uh, we can go ahead and uh, then uh, add those items. Uh, let's just say Kaiser or Bupa or self-insured. So here we can create multiple items for these custom these custom uh, drop-down list and how that is displayed in the main section when we go back here now we can see we have health insurance we probably want to use a little bit of a shorter name uh, since it's a little bit long okay we'll go ahead and abbreviate that so we can see the full one and here uh, in the main section we can see health insurance and those items that we have entered are now available to us in the drop down list so this is really handy when it gives you the ability to customize any different type of drop down list we also have four different custom uh, field names so we can assign these to to anything uh, you can uh, call this uh, contact uh, like contact type if you want to assign a different type or you can uh, have uh, any other information like last called and basically once we assign a label to that once we are back into the main we see that uh, here we have a contact type here so we can go ahead and type anything here or here so this gives you the ability to add custom fields to each and every contact and those are then also displayed throughout the application as well as on the invoice screen and within the contact sheet up here under uh, things so here we have our contact type and last call up here as well as health insurance so even within the contact list those names are also carried over next up we have the payment types uh, here you can enter just about any payment type that you like and these are used when um, you're recording payments for invoices uh, same with the uh, payment terms we can just select which one is our default payment type and that is the one that is most common in which our uh, customers are paying with so if uh, they're usually paying with credit card we'll go ahead and select credit card here and then on the payment screen when we uh, enter a new payment uh, then it'll appear here under the uh, payment type under here so uh, for new payments they'll automatically enter uh, here under the payment type next up on the setup screen we have new contact defaults and this is really handy when we create uh, new contacts there are often uh, certain fields that we want for every single new contact like if uh, we're scheduling a specific appointment type uh, for every new contact we can set appointment type if we're going if we want to assign a specific staff to every new contact we can do that here or if they have a specific state or province or uh, this would be the custom uh, drop down list that we created so what we go ahead and do is we can set those defaults uh, as well as the four uh, custom fields here we can go ahead and set those defaults and once we set those when we go back into the main screen and then we go ahead and create a new contact you'll see that uh, those defaults go ahead and uh, are entered here under those uh, so we have uh, Fred and the uh, new patient it's automatically entered for the new contact so it's really helpful when creating a new contact uh, as well as the health insurance here uh, that we've set default uh, also, uh, we have company information. These are used uh, for a few different reasons. We have uh, we can enter our company information there, as well as a manager and a manager email. And these are used when we're emailing uh, defaults. And also on the email, we have the ability to include a Google Map link. So entering your address here activates that link, and then uh, we can enter that Google Map link on uh, certain emails. Uh, and I'll go ahead and show that what that would look like here. So on, I'll show you this a little bit later on, but we'll go over it. So when we have an appointment reminder or something like that, we can then enter this map link here 
uh, or directions link and uh, that will automatically be uh, uh, a map link based on the address we set up in the company information. So putting your address in here is really helpful for that if you want to send your contacts automatically a map link to your location. Uh, next we have the main folder for contact attachments. We have the ability to uh, add attachments to uh, any contact uh, that we have here. So if we go ahead and select a contact and then add a contact, what we do need is we do need to assign a main folder where all of those attachments are going to be uh, attached. And if we try to add a file, it's going to tell us, hey, we need to uh, we have to have a dedicated folder that's going to store all these attachments in. So it'll go ahead and say, okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, assign a folder there. And then once we do that, we can browse the folder and then we see we have now a folder set for those contacts. And the same thing, if you choose to save PDF invoices uh, with this application, we do have the ability to create and save PDF uh, invoices. If you'd like to set a specific location in your computer f or on your server for those uh, PDF invoices, you can do that here. Simply browse for the folder and uh, go ahead and select uh, the folder and just click OK. And then all PDF uh, invoices will be stored here. Um, when we create PDF, uh, when we create invoices, we can uh, automatically do some uh, automated things. And this basically tells us on create all invoices, uh, what should we do after the invoices are created? Now on the main schedule, uh, we have the ability to create all the invoices with this button for a specific day. Simply clicking here, we'll create an invoice for every single scheduled appointment that you have scheduled, whether it's one or four staff. Um, and so I'll go ahead and show that to you there. Uh, so what we can do is we can set up, do we want to save this as a PDF? Do we want to print them or do we want to send them via email? So this is uh, the defaults that we want to do once uh, we create it. It'll automatically do that for you. So literally we could create all invoices for a single day within uh, 30 seconds. So it's really fast, really efficient and super easy. Uh, all of those. Uh, if we choose the uh, send via email, the uh, invoice will be created as a PDF. It'll be attached to the email and it'll be sent to the contact automatically. Um, these are our settings for appointment packages. If you sell appointment packages, you want to go ahead and select this. And what this does is it keeps track of uh, which appointments, how many packages your customers have used, how many they have left, how many they have purchased. So that's really helpful. We can also set out automated email reminders based on uh, those numbers of packages. So that's really helpful uh, when, we, when we do sell packages. We also uh, have the ability to uh, require appointment notes before invoicing. Um, when we, when we select, when we create all invoices, you may want to have uh, appointment notes. And we'll go over the notes a little bit here, but that's the setting. So if you want to basically make sure that you add an appointment note for every single uh, contact, you would go ahead and uh, select that here. If, uh, if you do, you'll be required to put a note in for every appointment before it can be invoiced. If this is unselected, the uh, invoices can't be created by appointment without the notes requirement. And then there's two ways that we can mark packages as used. Uh, packages can be used when they're when the invoice is created, or it can be when the appointment is scheduled. You may not want to use the invoicing feature, but you want to use the packages, so you would uh, select the scheduled appointment. So that means as soon as the appointment is scheduled, the package is uh, considered used. And so that'll help you keep track of it. So we have that option. And that is it for the setup screen. Next, we'll move on to the contacts sheet.